Welcome to this episode of Bounded in a Nutshell. Remember to take a moment to click on the link below to donate to a very special organization. Figure Skating in Harlem is the first organization in the world to combine the power of education with the grace and discipline of figure skating. It is dedicated to developing confidence, leadership, and academic achievement in young girls from low-income backgrounds. The numerous stories of success from its alumni owe a great deal to the unique blend of mentoring and self-expression that is championed by FSH. Remember, no donation is too small or too large to keep the dream alive for these exceptional young girls. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Lovely. Welcome to Bounded in a Nutshell, this masterclass with Blair Underwood. I'm going to uh, hand it over to Blair. I think you guys are in very good hands. Blair, if you need anything, I'm going to be your Wait, glamorized. Chuck, Chuck, you should list the order of people. Oh, yes. I forgot. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank God for my producer. Um, <laughs> the order of people. The order of people today will be uh, Alice, Jasmine, Omalolu, Zach, Gopal, Damien, Yemi. Does that work? I, I'm sorry if I butchered anyone's name. No, names, no, no. You, you left out Bibi. Bibi is after Gopal. Okay, sorry. I'll go through that again. Yeah. Alice, Jasmine, Omalolu, Zach, Gopal, Bibi, Damien, Yemi. There we go. Finally yeah. named it. Why don't you do this, Michelle? It'd be I, so much I just thought time. you could handle it. I texted it <laughs> to you. <laughs> you All right, over to you, Blair. <laughs> okay, well, let me ask this for you, though, Michelle or Chuck. Uh, so my first time doing this, of course, with, with you guys, what is the best way I can service you? How do, how do you usually run the process? I know it's monologues, yeah? Well, normally, the way we do it, in that order, the person who's doing the monologue, so Alice will be the first, she'd come on, she'd give you a little bit about herself, where she's at, and give us a rundown of where the monologue is from and a bit of a setup. Do the monologue. And, you know, we have about 15 or a little bit over 15 because we always run over per person, but in and around 15 minutes. And you can either let her go through it or stop her and just give her a couple of bits. It's not to complete the process. It's to sort of give pointers as to how to go forward, you know. So right. consider yourself a master teacher for ah, a couple okay. of hours. <laughs> You're too kind, brother. You're too kind. <laughs> They're eager. Over right. to you, mate. And, and Blair, don't get too panicked and stuff. We've had, we've sometimes run over, but if, you know, we like people to leave here having got something. So if you want to spend a bit longer on someone, that's perfectly fine. You know what I mean? And stuff. But I will prompt you to move you on if we're going too long. Yeah. Perfect. All Perfect. right. I was going to ask All you. Right. Over to you. Great. Sounds great. And, and each one of you that are doing the monologues, if there's anything in particular you need me or want me to kind of focus on or that you want to work on specifically, let me know, okay? Fantastic. Well, I can't wait. I got all the links for all of you guys. I've seen all the, the bios and I've seen some <laughs> clips of people. And well, thank you for sending that. Uh, Michelle. That was Michelle. You, you should thank yeah. Michelle. This show would not be happening without Michelle. I'm just like, yeah, I'm kind of getting that feeling. I'm the glamorized <laughs> figurehead, man. I'm the glamorized <laughs> figurehead, the whole thing. <laughs> you do it well. Thank, but thank you. you. All right. Over to you. <laughs> all right. All right. So who's first? That's me. Hi. Hi, Alice. Hey, how are you, Alice? Thank you so much for doing this. This is so cool. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, I'm going to be doing a monologue from People, Places, and Things. Um, so it's uh, uh, right before this, she's talking to the doctor, and basically it's, she's still kind of holding on to her, her addiction. Um, and they're going back and forth between, you know, the idea of God, and right before this, the, doc the doctor says, um, right, in, in this program, we, you know, replace God with people, places, and things. We're powerless over people, places, and things. And then she goes into this monologue. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, it's, it's new for me. I love this play and uh, just wanted to work on it a little bit. <laughs> okay. um, and yeah, I guess one thing that like, I would like to work on overall is just like, I get super nervous all the time. I've been doing it for a while and I always, always, always get nervous. So uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Okay, great.
I find reality pretty difficult. I find the business of getting out of bed and getting on with my day really hard. I find picking up my phone to be a mammoth fucking struggle. The number on my inbox, the friends who won't see me anymore, the food pictures and porn videos, the bombings and beheadings, the moral ambivalence you have to have just to be able to carry on with your day. I find the knowledge that we're all just atoms and one day we'll stop and be dirt in the ground. I find that overwhelmingly disappointing. And I wish I could feel otherwise. I wish I could be like you or my mother to feel that some things are predetermined and meaningful and that we're all on a path somewhere between the start and finish lines. But I can't because I care about what's true, what's actually verifiably true. You're able to forfeit rationality with a comforting untruth, so how are you supposed to help me? You're looking at the world through such a tight filter, you're barely living in it, you're barely alive. Drugs and alcohol have never let me down. They have always loved me. There are substances I can put into my bloodstream that make the world perfect. That is the only absolute truth in the universe. I'm being difficult because you want to take it away from me. So, sorry. Alice, <laughs> that's wonderful. It's, it's good writing. <laughs> it's brilliant writing. And I tell you, it's so re relevant right about now. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why am I working on this right now? <laughs> Did you choose this or was it given to you? I picked it. Yeah. I, didn't, I, I saw it at St. Anne's um, when it was like a few years ago. And I just, I fell, I fell in love with it like many other people. And then just have been, just have been working on the part a little bit just because it's so well written. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, have you done a lot of camera work? Yes. <laughs> More camera yeah. than stage or stage? More camera than stage, yeah. Yeah, no, it's which one. I, which I want to work on, yeah. <laughs> you want to work on more camera, more camera work? Uh, more stage. More stage, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, what was so beautiful about what you did was it's so nuanced. Mm -hmm. And I saw someone who understands real life. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of doing camera work. It really is. Just be real. It ain't okay. that deep. <laughs> We've been studying to take classes for 80 years. It ain't that deep, just <laughs> honest. Yeah. And I felt, I really felt like I was not watching um, an actress doing a monologue. I felt like I was in a therapy session oh, listening wow. to people. Um, you know, those kind of monologues are interesting because it's all about the colors, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about the roller coaster ride. It's not taking roller coasters, uh, taking ups and downs and the ebbs and flows and the different colors for the sake of just doing it. Mm -hmm. It has to make sense. It has to make logical sense. And I felt and believed everything you did even then what's the line about it? it's overwhelming something's overwhelming oh i find it <laughs> the uh i find the the fact that we're all just atoms and one day we'll we'll be dirt in the ground i find that overwhelmingly disappointing yeah it was beautiful because overwhelmingly disappointing it was beautiful because one of the things i one of the things i find with um mediocre acting is people forget to be real but the nuances but specifically mm -hmm. to know that it's all a thought it's all a new thought. It's all the first time you're saying it. Mm -hmm. So you did something really sweet, beautiful when you said it's overwhelmingly disappointing, but you're looking for the word overwhelmingly disappointing. But you did it in such a way where a lot of times people would take a beat and a look around. What is that word? That's one way to do it. And they may play, that may play better on stage. And that's why I asked you the question because <laughs> you were just thinking it. Not thinking about what your body is doing, what your eyes are doing, what your eyebrows are doing, you know, not thinking of playing for results. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you have a beautiful internal life. Thank you. In, internal life. It's like, it's like see the emotions bubbling up mm -hmm. and the foundation underneath uh, what you were saying. 
and what you were feeling. Um, you know, and that monologue in lesser hands could be angry. One note. Mm -hmm. Or could be utterly vulnerable and, and feeling like a victim. Right. But I really felt like you found the colors in, in the flow inside. So just, just keep that up. I don't have anything negative to I'm say right. at all. <laughs> <laughs> I know we have more time. I don't know. Would you like to do it again? Oh, I know it's a, or, or, or not so much. I mean, I'm, I'm good. I could do it again. It's up to... And, and yeah. Alice, could this time around, when you do it, could you give us your eyes? I know you don't yes. want to... Look in here. Can you just they sort of talk to us and give us your eyes with it, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, this that, is... that, and give Blair another chance to see if there's anything he wants to bring up. <laughs> yeah, listen, I, I appreciate that. This is more Zoom technique, because obviously, we're doing in the camera lens. Unless it's a Jonathan Demi movie, who's a fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold the camera. Is there anything specific? Ah, I see friends. Sorry. Uh, is there anything specific um, to play with? I can just play with it differently this time and see what comes up. Yeah. Let me let me think about that for a second. Because mm -hmm. um, that was a wonderful take, beautiful take, than what you did. But I would say, with the doctor himself. Mm -hmm. Um, assail him, that accuse him more. And there's one line you say, but you, whatever you say, whatever the lines are about, oh, but yeah. you, yeah. make it personal. Okay, great. Yeah, because maybe depending on how long you two have had a relationship, um, it, come, it, it may come from a different, different place. Mm -hmm. And also just to piggyback on what Blair said, Alice, mm -hmm. I'd love to see more of what his reaction to what you're saying is. Yeah. To just bring the scene to, the immediacy of the scene. Just see if there's stuff you can imagine him giving you that makes you keep, like I say, always remember with a speech is that you don't know when you're gonna end and there's no reason for it to keep going unless yeah, something yeah. is making you to keep talking. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so just see if that moves it along for you. Okay. I find reality pretty difficult. I find the business of getting out of bed and getting on with my day really hard. I find picking up my phone to be a mammoth fucking struggle. The number on my inbox, the friends who won't see me anymore the food pictures and porn videos, the bombings and beheadings, the moral ambivalence you have to have to just be able to carry on with your day. I find the knowledge that we're all just atoms and one day we'll stop and be dirt in the ground. I find that overwhelmingly disappointing. And I wish I could feel otherwise. I wish I could be like you or my mother to think that some things are predetermined and meaningful and that we're all on a path somewhere between the start and the finish line. But I can't because I care about what's true, what's actually verifiably true. You're able to forfeit rationality with a comforting untruth. So how are you supposed to help me? You're looking at the world through such a tight filter, you're barely living in it, you're barely alive. Drugs and alcohol have never let me down. They have always loved me. There are substances I can put into my bloodstream that make the world perfect. That is the only absolute truth in the universe. I'm being difficult because you want to take it away from me, so. 
Sorry. So Alice, stay in it. Stay Different. in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's all right. Stay in it. When you start talking about drugs, you can pick up there. We yeah. talking about drugs. Mm -hmm. What you did just now worked. It was great. Mm -hmm. But you believed it, which is one option. I want to try just a different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take, yeah. Different one. What if you don't believe it? Mm -hmm. oh, Everything great. drugs have been is a lie, and you know it. You what he's offering you, mm -hmm. you need that from him, and you want that. I just you can't. It's not registering in your brain. Yeah, yeah. So everything about drugs is a lie, mm -hmm. but you want it to be true. Mm -hmm. See what happens. I love that. Drugs and alcohol have never let me down. They have always loved me. There are substances I can put into my bloodstream that make the world perfect. That is the only absolute truth in the universe. I'm being difficult because you won't take it away from me. So. Sorry. Nice. Did that take you somewhere differently? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just like fighting myself. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I have no idea if it's in the context of the real play or the story, but it's just fun yeah. to play with. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it makes total sense because she's she goes everywhere and she fights it for half the play, <laughs> you know. Um, as, Blair, as Blair would know, Alice, also, you know, as you're repeating on stage, mm -hmm. having to do it eight times a week, those are two options you could go back and forth with how you yeah. play, you know, and uh, those read beautifully, you know. Yeah. Um, no, but, uh, but I'm with Blair, there's very little to adjust with your work, you're just very present. I feel he could keep giving you notes all day and you'll just keep playing what he says. So, well done, nice, nice Thank start, so Blair, much. anything else? So fun. <laughs> no, just, just beautiful work. I mean, you, you have the facility, you have the skill set. It's, it's all, mm -hmm. it's emotions, it's intellect, it's mind, it's thinking, it's feeling, and you're doing it all and you're doing it all at the same time and you're taking that journey and that's all, that's all what we do is. That's all that when we want to communicate our feeling in the story we do what you just did. Thank you so much. Just keep it up. Now, in terms of the nerves, yeah. know that you're great. You have greatness in you. Okay, I'll try. I'll keep trying you to breathe. <laughs> walk in the room, remind yourself of that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I deeply Thanks, appreciate it. Thanks, Alice. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Jasmine is up. Where is Jasmine? Hi. I'm here. Oh, there she is. Hey, Jasmine. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. Good. Some good. beautiful teeth. Look at that smile. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you, what are you doing today? I am doing a piece from Women of Manhattan by John Patrick Shanley. Mm. Um, and what's going on in this scene prior is these two people are on this blind date um, and they're starting to realize that even though they have their own flaws, they do sort of connect with each other. Um, but uh, the woman in the scene wants a little something more than what it seems the guy is willing to even entertain in his mind. So she's, she, okay, she's asked for a lot on the first date already. Well. <laughs> the blind date, so it's their first date, right? Yes, it's their first okay. date, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> I will. I will dream on because that's exactly what I'm talking about. My dreams, which you do not know and which you don't think are important enough to know. You think this body is something? <laughs> what a joke. Any poet the last 3,000 years will tell you what a joke that is, that this flesh, this stuff, this heavy breathing, we have this aptitude, you know, in our hearts, in our brains, in our souls to arrive at something so rich, so so inflamed and so unspeakable and, and new, not this tired shit that you wanna foist on me. That's not what I want. I won't change my standards. I know what I know. If I had to live off the kind of thing you're offering me, I'd starve to death. You gotta dig for treasure, Duke, not just settle for the stuff that's lying out on the ground. And you could sleep with me if you weren't so goddamn lazy and narcissistic and were willing to exert yourself and, and, and put interest in an actual human being. 
but you won't sleep with me. Because I will not perform some stupid mechanical act like 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 I'm trying to remember something, something fine, something something from another world, something beautiful and alien and lost. What? You look vacant. Don't you get it? I will give it to you in a nutshell. I'll give it to you in basic modern American. I'm not interested in the hardware without the software. That scene? I don't know. That's it, yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's beautiful. That's a powerful line. I'm not interested in the hardware without the software. Who right. John Patrick Shanley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great stuff. It was great Thank stuff. Um, let me let me um, let me try this. How long? It's their first date. What did he say to trigger this monologue? So he's basically trying to convince her to sleep with him because even though they don't have love, they have a connection, um, which is really just them, in my opinion, not being not so great people, and they're just like, why don't we just be not great together? Um, so yeah, he's he's trying to convince her to do that and she kind of flip-flops back and forth kind of like no then yes and then she kind of just says like well you're you might not want to sleep with me right now but you will want to sleep with me eventually and he's just kind of like yeah right like keep dreaming you're you're not all that kind of thing right so what's the last thing he says right before you launch into the monologue dream on judy dream on <laughs> okay so the power of a the power of a woman is an extraordinarily powerful thing. My wife would tell you that. That's what she tells me. <laughs> it's true. The love and power of a woman has toppled governments, countries, man, manhood. Um, the power you have and the strength you have as a woman that a man desires, and in this case, wants to sleep with you, you're holding all the cards. So try it when you start. He says, dream on. Yeah. He is so beneath you. Okay. He wants you and needs you more than you are willing to even give to him. And that's going to color differently how you launch into it. And it's going to give you some place to go. Also, because if you're smarter than him, I get a feeling from what I'm hearing, you're smart, or, or she thinks she's smarter than him at least. Remember that when you start. I don't need you. This is cute. If I want to, I can. You want this body. Okay. <laughs> and then one other thing, when you, when you, before you say, what? What? Like he's, like he's not, he's looking at you quiz, uh, quizzically, like he doesn't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, just try, if the words take you there, because you know the words better than I do, if the words take you there, just find the beauty in where you're going because you're in control. And then you realize he's not getting it again. What, what, why are you looking at me like that? What, you know, I don't want to skip, I'm not giving you a line reading, but just that thought of, that'll take you in a different place and it'll give you another color also. Okay, okay. great, thank you. I will, <laughs> I will dream on because that's exactly what I'm talking about. My dreams, which you do not know, and which you don't even think are important enough to know. <laughs> you think this body is something. <laughs> what a joke. Every poet the last 3,000 years will tell you what a joke that is. This, this flesh, this stuff, this heavy breathing. <laughs> we have the aptitude in our hearts and our brains and our souls to arrive at something so rich and inflamed and unspeakable and new, not this tired shit that you want to foist on me. That is not what I want. <laughs> I won't change my standards. I know what I know. And if I had to live off the kind of thing you're offering me, I'd starve to death. You got to dig for treasure, Duke, not just settle for some stuff that's lying out on the ground. Oh, and you could sleep with me if you weren't so goddamn lazy and narcissistic and were willing to exert yourself and get to know the actual core of another human being. But you will not sleep with me because I will not perform some stupid mechanical pantomime 
like I was trying and failing to remember something fine, something, something from another world, something beautiful and alien and lost. What? You look vacant. Don't you get it? <laughs> I'll give it to you in a nutshell. I'll give it to you in basic modern American. I am not interested in the hardware without the software. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. How did that feel trying those different taps? It felt better because it was a little more grounded in, I, instead of me trying to play to him, I was kind of thinking more about myself. I, I felt like I was talking to me in some way and like pumping myself up, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. That's interesting. Pumping yourself up. Because it's kind of like what, going back to what Alice was doing, when you, with the drugs, sometimes you have to pump yourself up and convince yourself, you know, the no drugs thing is better, but it's better to not live that life. You know that you may even want to sleep with him, but, but I'm going to act like I don't. And then you need to respect me and understand me first. Yes, you know? exactly. So yeah, no, that's beautiful. Beautiful work. Um, go ahead, Chuck. I was just going to say, you, you mentioned something that I was thinking a similar thing. Jasmine, I mean, we have time to try one spot. I would love you to do it. It's a real shame he disappointed you. It's good. He had everything else going on. He looks good. He's got a great job. He's actually, for a guy, pretty smart. You wanted this date to work, right? Mm -hmm. So can you just, just for giggles, just give it a go where it's not straight away, uh, it's not, you're not quite as, as, as Blair was saying, like with the drugs example, you're not quite as convinced about the fact that you're ending this relationship with this guy. It's a shame you have to. Just throw a little bit of that in. Do you know what I mean? The date could have gone much better than it did. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It does. And also, and also, I always come back to this. Why do people talk so much? He's a good writer. Why does he? Why are you that you could have ended this shit early? And the line that gave me the clue to this is when you go, you could sleep with me. Why does she feel she needs to say, you could have had this? I mean, one take is, oh, you could have had, but I think she's smarter than that. It's, it's a shame. You know, you, you could have had this. I got you. And yeah. so just think of saying it again, really picture your listener. If I heard, even if someone had been talking to me and then she says a line out of the blue, you could have slept with me. I'm going to lean forward in my chair thinking, Okay, how do I do it? And then she goes back again. And I think that's what's going on with her. It's like, why does she talk for so long? You know, you have, just throw that in and okay. see what that does for you, yeah? Okay, yes, thank you. <laughs> if I add one more adjustment, is that too much? No. She can take it, go for it, Blair. She can take it. You good with that, Jasmine? Okay. What is the line when you say, I know that I know, or you know that you know, that you know something that you know? I know what I know. I know what I know. Hmm. So can you try something, everything before that from the beginning until I know what I know? Because now you're saying, now, that's, that's, that's a transition. You say, okay, now let me tell you what I know, the real deal. What about it? Let's just try this. As just shits and giggles. <laughs> I'll put the shits in there, Joe. You said just for giggles. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I cut off the shits. I'll start swearing later on in the session. I thought All right, there you, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> just at that, from the very beginning, because remember, it's your first, it's your first date. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't, may not want to be as invested personally to this guy. It's just your first date. Yeah. So I think up until you know what you know, because it's almost insulting at a certain point. So let me take it somewhere else. From the beginning until you know what you know, just be above it. What you were doing, but just go even further with that. Okay. And, and okay. don't even, don't be so invested. Don't be so invested. It's not that deep. Okay. Just, let, me, let me tell you something. Okay. And that's all I'm saying. I won't put too much on. I got it. Thank you. <laughs> I will. I will dream on because that's exactly what I'm talking about. My dreams, which you do not know and which you don't think are important enough to know. <laughs> you think this body is something. What a joke. <laughs> Any poet the last 3,000 years will tell you what a joke that is. This, this flesh, this, this, this heavy breathing. We have this aptitude 
in our hearts and our brains and our souls to arrive at something so rich, so inflamed, so unspeakable and new, not this tired shit that you want to foist on me. <laughs> That's not what I want. <laughs> I won't change my standards. No, I know what I know. <laughs> hmm. I do know what I know. If I had to live off the kind of thing that you're offering me, I'd starve to death. <laughs> you gotta dig for treasure, Duke. Not just settle for the stuff that's lying out on the ground. <laughs> you could sleep with me if you weren't so goddamn lazy and narcissistic and were actually willing to exert yourself and put in some effort to care about the actual core of another human being. But you will not sleep with me because I will not perform some stupid mechanical pantomime. <laughs> like I was trying and, and failing to remember something fine, something from a better world, something beautiful and alien and lost. What? You look vacant. Don't you get it? <laughs> I'll give it to you in a nutshell. I'll, I'll give it to you in basic modern American. I. I'm not interested in the hardware without the software. Yes. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. I love that. How did that, that, how did that feel? I saw all kinds of journeys in there and colors and textures and variables. Yeah, it felt good. It was, it was weird because at one point I was like, this feels very, very slow. Um, just in terms of like thinking those thoughts really fast and like, speaking them very slowly yep. but um it felt very um pointed i guess if that's yeah 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 because you what i felt was in the beginning you were kind of riding above it and then it became pointed yeah you know, let me tell you what i know which yeah. is what it should be but yeah. it took me on a journey it's like okay oh, oh we're feeling this okay i'm feel i can i can i can register that okay and then i'm being i'm, I'm being i'm being spoken to in a different way yeah and it takes me, it takes me as the viewer and the actor in that scene. I thought I was an actor in the scenes. So you're looking dead in my face in the, in the mm -hmm. camera. And I felt that journey with you. So no, just beautiful work, beautiful work. Lovely. Desmond, it didn't seem slow at all. I think the only reason it probably felt slow is because you know that speech and you're used to just like shooting through it all the time. It didn't, Blair will tell you, it did not seem slow. I felt like I was being talked to, you know? So okay. lovely work. Really did nice. You for, Jasmine, did you up for a second when uh, you, you were taking that adjustment? I know that what I know. Yes, I did. That was sweet to watch because I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't care. But you did I it always know, you right? did the way that a theater trained actor would do. Thank yeah. you. Continue to do that because what happens when you do more camera work, it's easy to get lazy. Nobody's going to fault you for it. Cut, do it again. But if you can just stay in it, sometimes you get the best work the best moments because you're thinking faster and you're transitioning. And for the audience to watch that on camera could work. So please and, continue to do that. And I'll, I'll bring something up there because Blair, you, you're on the other side of the table now as a producer and whatever is that, even if in the, what happened there was, I knew you'd gone up only because I'd heard it before, but we're not auditioning the scene or the lines. What we saw, you know, as, as you as a producer, you and now you saw someone go, something happened and then they came back into it and they use it. That's someone that could adjust in front. You didn't give a shit about the line that wasn't there. It's, that's not what we're auditioning. We've got the scene, that's locked and ready to go. It's all about you. So don't get so thrown off with when lines might, because all that happened there is that you were so invested in it. It was doing way it stopped you and you weren't ready. And that's beautiful <laughs> for us to watch. That's, that's real, right? right? Blair, you can you know, say that as a producer, director, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. You did Thank it. I you. encourage you to continue to do that and everybody else listening. It's 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 a beautiful thing to watch for an audience. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, we're gonna jump ahead to Zach. We haven't got Omalolu yet, or for some reason. So Zach, you're up. Thank you so much. Hi. Can you see and hear me? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Thanks. thank you guys so much for doing this. Absolutely. You played yeah. Hamlet, right? I did. Wow. Okay, cool. Yeah, I watched your clip. I watched all the clips. Oh, amazing. Yeah, and that was great. Thank you very much. You did what I want to do. I haven't done that yet. Chuck keeps trying to get me to play Hamlet one day. <laughs> I, I watched that. I think you should friggin' do it. I think, hey, we'll talk about that later, Blair. Okay. Don't age <laughs> yourself out. Let other people do that. That's right. Happen. That's right. Good you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so what I have for today, uh, you know, uh, 
I was one thinking about what to do and um, I'm just sort of feeling uh, like the thing that we can't do right now is stretch, you know, um, we're sort of uh, stuck in these small spaces and uh, trying to maneuver around everybody and not to take up too much room. So I was thinking about um, pieces that would be like stretching and I uh, picked this piece from Titus Andronicus. Um, so I think I'm probably not right to play Titus at this moment. Uh, but I wanted to say these words. Great. What's the setup of the scene? Uh, the setup of the scene. Um, so he has just uh, cut off his hand and sent it to the emperor um, because the emperor says if he sends him his hand, he'll spare two of his children. Um, so it's a, it, it's a happy one. <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Oh, here I lift this one hand up to heaven and bow this feeble ruin to the earth. If any power pities wretched tears, to that I call, what? Wilt thou kneel with me? Do then, dear heart, and with our sighs we'll breathe the welkin dim and stain the sun with fog as, as sometime clouds when they do hug him in their melting bosoms. If there were reason for these miseries, then into limits could I bind my woes. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of going up. Take your time. You can start again. Start again. Enough time. Yeah. Oh, here I lift this one hand up to heaven and bow this feeble ruin to the earth. If any power pities wretched tears, to that I call. What? Wilt thou kneel with me? Do then, dear heart. And with our sighs we'll breathe the welkin dim and stain the sun with fog as sometime clouds when they do hug him in their melting bosoms. If there were reason for these miseries, then into limits could I bind my woes. When heaven doth weep, doth not the earth o'erflow? When the winds rage, doth not the sea wax mad? Threatening the welkin with his big, swollen face. And wilt thou have a reason for this coil? I am the sea. Hark, how her sighs do blow. She is the weeping welkin, I the earth. Then must my sea be moved with her sighs. Then must my earth with her continual tears become a deluge. Overflowed and drowned for why my bowels cannot hide her woes, but like a drunkard must I vomit them. Then give me leave, for losers will have leave to ease their stomachs with their bitter tongues. Thank you. Oh, I don't think I can hear you. Sorry about that. Can you hear sorry. me? All right, sorry. No, that was wonderful. Had you done that before or performed it? I've, uh, I kind of, for some reason, love this piece. Uh, and I've thought about it. And um, I've tried it once in an audition. And, uh, but uh, I just love the piece, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's Shakespeare, it's, it's just exquisite. Yeah. Um, what you, what you do so beautifully is tell the story so a contemporary audience can understand it. So I, if I didn't understand the words, if you're speaking a foreign language, I could, I could kind of follow where you're going with it, which is the first order of business. Um, I don't even want to mess with it. I, I, want, you, I want you to try it again. But I am going to say this, um, and I don't know because I don't know this monologue, 
But one of the things I learned, you know, when I went to college, we learned about iambic pentameter and of course the rhythm of it all. But it wasn't until I did Othello where Barry Edelstein, as who I said the other day, is a master at Shakespeare. He was, um, not that he was adamant about it. He just laid the groundwork, this is what we're doing. And he was a purist in the iambic pentameter of it all and where a comma comes and where, where Shakespeare stops writing, which usually means a breath. And it was really a whole nother layer of doing the work where I had to really understand and, and try that journey of putting the breath where Shakespeare wrote it. So I don't know where that plays with the work you've done on that. I just don't know the, the, the rhythm of, of, of this particular monologue. But if you're working on it, uh, that could take you in a whole nother place too. You'll find and discover new things like, oh, if I take a breath there, that, oh, that's what he meant when he wrote that third line after that or the next, next line. Um, so just, I would just kind of play with that just later on, you know, when, you, when you're just kind of playing with it. And maybe you have done that before this, I don't know. I, I will say, well, you can tell me, have you done that? Uh, yeah, I've, I've messed around with it. I mean, I, I think my question with this is, this is, or one of the millions of questions I have about this, uh, is this is like this moment of huge um, emotion. And kind of what I love about it is that it is this, he's sort of describing this feeling of, um, I must be moved to this sort of, uh, yeah. Stream grief, um, in part because uh, the part I failed to describe is uh, his daughter is there whose hands have been cut off and the tongue has been cut out. It's a happy play, like I said. Yeah. Uh, Jack, one, one thing I, I, I think that will help you with that, with what you're talking about, is first of all, someone asks him a question. I think one of his sons, if I remember correctly, saying, why, why are you doing this? So this speech is an answer. Remember that. So the, remember the question that's been asked and you're explaining these things and explaining, so they, explaining this thing. And then you get to the, if the wind does this stuff, not that whatever, if the, they, then I am the sea. That's my explanation. Mm. And the vineyard is weeping. She's the water. So it's, it's an answer to a question that's going to drive you through. And I, I suggest you really, like Blair was saying in the rhythm, you know it, I was actually remembering a lot of the speech and you were hitting, you were breathing it. But really just think of going through to the end of the line, even force yourself, don't think about the logic of, just going to the end of the line and, and, and see if you can think of yourself answering the question, okay? So it's not a speech that has just landed, it's your son that has asked you, why, why are we here? And you, you explain this whole thing. Oh, and by the way, Lavinia, my daughter, come here and sit down there. And then you're back to the question of whatever. And it comes to the thing, the weep. And it, it, it's a build. You are right. Instinctively, you know it's a build. It's one of my favorite speeches in all of Shakespeare because it's that incredible build. But he's just cut off his hand. A few day, a couple of days ago, he killed his son. It's a bit much. And it's like those last two people that have gone that have told themselves lies like they were truth. Maybe this is that going on also, okay? So just think of those, those, those questions. And, and I saw you sort of holding back on the weeping because you're worried about Zoom and am I going over the top? <laughs> if you earn the question, you, I could see it. If you earn the question and whatever and breathe at those ends of the lines and all that, you don't have to worry about being over the top. You will be what you need to be. Does that make sense? So that's go great. for it. Think of the question that's asked before. And I'd say go about one and a half times. I know this might be an exercise faster. Yeah, okay. let's see what that does to you. Great. Okay. Thank you. Oh, here I lift this one hand up to heaven and bow this feeble ruin to the earth. If any power pities wretched tears, to that I call. Wilt thou kneel with me? Do then, dear heart, and with our sighs we'll breathe the welkin dim and stain the sun with fog as sometime clouds when they do hug him in their melting bosoms. If there were reason for these miseries, then into limits could I bind my woes. Can I just stop you? Because that was beautiful. Sorry, Blair, I'm jumping in here because I love and I know. <laughs> Remember with Lavinia, you, the words are there, you're comforting her. Will weep and bring more water than the welkin. <laughs> and the, you, hey, daughter. Mm. And then don't take that big beat. 
you finish it with her, and then you go back to your question, son. That's mm. what's happening, <laughs> you know? So that that's has, And that's the madness. That's why actors, I think Blair's probably had to do this. He talked about it in his question about flipping on a switch. That's what makes people cray cray. Isn't acting mad, it's how quickly they go from this to this. Mm. So you're talking to the heavens, hey daughter, let's drink with it, then back to your question. If there were, you know what I mean? That's mm. the madness. You don't have to play madness. It's, it's landing those intentions. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So go for it again. Okay. So. Oh, here I lift this one hand up to heaven and bow this feeble ruin to the earth. If any power pities wretched tears to that I call, what? Wilt thou kneel with me? Do then, dear heart, and with our sighs we'll breathe the welkin dim and, and stain the sun with fog as sometime clouds when they do hug him in their melting bosoms. If there were reason for these miseries. Go back, go back, the welkin, comfort her. Don't rush it. I know I said speak faster, but don't rush it. Conquer her. Are you weeping? Come, daughter. Do you know what I mean? See what that does to you when you suddenly slow down. And at the beginning, you're trying to save your two sons, right? Yeah. You've given your hand, you're praying to the gods. I've just cut my hand. Remember the pain? Use that yeah. of the immediacy. And this is a prayer yeah. to save your sons. Mm -hmm. Then you see your daughter. And then you're gonna take your time to really imagine a child. She's not a child who can't, she's been regressed back to childhood, can't speak, can't do anything. A child, and then back to the question. Do you see what I'm saying? It's yes. all colors, yeah? So the beginning, you're saying, please God, let my hand that I've caught up save my boys. Mm. And then you hear a sound because she can't speak, she doesn't have a tongue. You have to comfort her because you're still a father. And then you remember the question, I believe it's Lucius asks you, Oh, okay, son, I'll explain to you why I am weeping. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Those are the journeys. So make sure you see them and feel them. That will not, don't worry about your emotional life, not your responsibility. Yeah? Okay, great, great. I'm gonna try and do all that. <laughs> take your time, take your time. Okay. Mm. Oh, here I lift this one hand up to heaven and bow this feeble ruin to the earth. If any power pities wretched tears, to that I call, what? Oh, wilt thou kneel with me? Do then, dear heart, uh, and, and with our sighs we'll breathe the welkin dim and stain the sun with fog as sometime uh, clouds when they do hug him in their melting bosoms. If there were reason for these miseries, then into limits could I bind my woes. When the heavens weep, doth not the earth o'erflow? Hmm? When the winds rage, doth not the sea wax mad, threatening the welkin with his big swollen face? And wilt thou have a reason for this coil? I am the sea. Hark how her sighs do blow. She is the weeping welkin, I the earth. Then must my sea be moved with her sighs. Then must my earth, with her continual tears, become a deluge, overflowed and drowned for why? My bowels cannot hide her woes, but like a drunkard must I vomit them. Then give me leave, for losers will have leave to ease their stomachs with their bitter tongues. Black, over to you. Man, 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 that's <laughs> a great direction. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic execution. Thank you. How'd that feel to you, Zach? Just, well, how'd that feel to you? It's good, I mean, yeah, like my, I like what you're saying about, um, about worrying less about the internal emotional life and um, playing the actions to the characters, you know, which sounds like, right. Uh, but it's so easy to, to lose Forget. that this yeah. place, you know? Yeah. And I don't know about you, Blair, you can tell, but you can uh, tell us how you felt, but that moment where uh, you said, what is it, the, the deluge, you know what I mean? And vomited out the word deluge. That's what Sicily Berry and, and all those people talk about, the sounds of the words, apart from the, just the logic of it. 
Mm. There was nothing self-conscious about it. Yes. If yes. anything, out of if you went ten times around, you'd have earned it because we were being grounded, right? Like Blair was saying about grounding it, grounding it, grounding it, so that when that thing can't be held on, which is what a deluge is. Mm. It, I literally, thank God my mic was off because I just went, yes, when you did that. You know? <laughs> I did. I went, yes. Yeah, because, and it's not about, you don't need to be self-conscious because you've earned it, you know. It's, yeah. a, it's a good character for you. I, I, you're probably too young for it, but my God, one day you're going to nail that one. Um, well, thank really. you very much. You're gonna kill <laughs> now, one of the things, you know, you talk about the deluge uh, line was something I learned along the way is how important it is to, now I was doing, a Shakespeare production early on in my early 20s and somebody I really respected said to me he said you know you're doing a very contemporary thing you're taking pauses and breaths in between the lines you're thinking in between the lines he said with Shakespeare you think within the lines that changed everything for me <laughs> so all of a sudden I saw how all the different words were colored again not playing for results but just what you did with the deluge it came out that way colored the word differently the result was because you're connecting the intention to the poetry of the words, which is beautiful. And just, I would say, just do more of that. And the more you see the world around you and you feel mm -hmm. the intense relationships, it's gonna color all those words differently. It'll color those moments differently. For instance, just something to work on. I think when you see your daughter, when you say what? When you see someone you love, and especially in this case, everything he's gone through and what she has gone through, that, that, Sorry, there's a helicopter going over there. That, that, that um, sense of love and compassion is going to color the words differently. And when you speak to her about, come, come, okay, come, just the, the nuances of the moment, come, sit. You know, it's gentle if you love this person. If you hate this person or despise this person, like, sit your ass down. It's a whole different thing. I, yeah. I know it sounds basic, but Shakespeare is a different, different thing. And, and that's how we know this guy isn't right, is that he's one minute doing that, then he's like, hey, yeah. darling, come mm -hmm. here. And then the next, is that's, that's all you gotta play. You don't, gotta, you don't have to play cray cray, you know? Um, yeah. Not but, just, I'm gonna go learn that monologue now. I've never done know, that. No, it's, it's one of my, and you know, I would say to everyone watching, I've had the honor of, of, of working uh, with Tony Hopkins, and he is. But when I first saw him do this monologue was in the movie with Julie Tamor. And I, to this day, that is the moment I, that is, that is the moment that solidified for me in many ways. One of the pit stops in my Shakespeare journey is seeing how he does it in the movie. It's worth going to see. If you see nothing else in the movie, just go watch him do that moment. And well, it's quite that. heartbreaking. Yeah. Make a note of it. And everyone yeah. watching it, it's a real story. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you both. Um, we'll have uh, Paul next. Hey. Hey, mate. Paul. How are you? Good, good. Hey, Bla. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, so I'm going to be doing um, Noah from The Affair. Um, in this scene, he has just gotten out of prison. I've just gotten out of prison. And uh, it's been three years and I was accused of accidental manslaughter. And um, I've, I've been separated with my wife, um, but we haven't actually officially been divorced. So I come back to Montauk to try and get her back. And she says that she can't be seen with me because she would lose custody of her child. So I take her on a trip to Block Island to convince her to go away with me at my one last chance to try and win her back. Um, and in this scene, We've actually just missed the ferry back to New York, to Montauk. And um, we are together in a cabin at night. And uh, she's just shared her story with me about losing her son and the grief that it's given her. And I too am sharing a story with um, having lost someone that I love too. This, this is the woman you're having an affair with? This is my second, from my second marriage. So, um, it, it was the woman that I had an affair with um, that event, that actually broke up our first marriage. And it's the woman that I, I truly love that I want to be with. Been a busy man. It's complex. <laughs> it's, <I> mean, complicated. <laughs> it's, it's complicated. Yeah. Right, cool. um, and what I'm working on is really, um, this is, you know, uh, Hegai Levy and uh, Sarah Tring, who you work with in the treatment. And um, they're really, for me, they're so good at writing characters and, 
creating a humanity where it just allows you to just be, I feel, where you don't have to do much. And uh, just trusting that, trusting the camera picks up enough of that where um, you don't have to do too much, but still doing enough. That makes sense. I haven't been back home in 15 years. My mother died there. She'd been sick for a long time. And uh, my father basically left home because he couldn't handle it. And Nina got out of there as soon as high school was over. So in the end, it was just me and my ma. I remember the day I got into Williams. Full ride. It's the worst day of my life because I, I knew I couldn't go. I mean, who, who'd take care of her if I did, right? So I hid the letter. I wasn't going to tell her. I was just going to pretend that I didn't get in. But Williams called my school, my high school, and uh, that's what they do with the scholarship students. And, and the principal called my mom, and uh, she was so happy. She was so excited, and uh, she started to cry. And then she, uh, she nearly choked on her, on her own. Um, it's a horrible disease. Anyway, uh, it was like a month later and uh, I was about to graduate senior year. And uh, she told me she'd, uh, she decided to die. She was gonna, you know, and uh, she never said it was for me. You know, she, 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 um, she knew about the scholarship. She knew she was gonna be alone, but she never said it was for me. She, um, I, uh, the problem was her hands, she couldn't, do it alone. I mean, the MS, it just made them so gnarly. And she couldn't open the pill bottles. She, she couldn't even swallow the pills. So I crushed them up for her. And uh, I put them in some yogurt. And we spent the day together. I read to her. Just some, some short stories and uh, some headlines and her favorite poems. And uh, she told me, she told me I'd been a wonderful son. <laughs> and I fed her the yogurt. Like she was my child. in prison I, I I thought about you all the time I I don't know why why would I destroy my marriage for someone that someone that I just met in a diner you know I, I, I couldn't figure it out but just now just now as you were telling me about Gabriel I realized I realized you're the only person I've ever met who's watched someone they love die that's why I love you so much. Beautiful, beautiful. Let me ask you something about the, uh, the context of the story. When you give this monologue, when you have this, this conversation, did she just tell you that somebody died or you knew that already? I knew it, you knew but it. to the extent to which it affected her, I did not know. That's in this moment right here. Yeah. And what happens right before you start talking? What launches you into this? She shares that with me and she asks me. So what happens is that she, um, my dad has just given me the keys to our home because he's just died and it's in his will. And uh, I don't know why, because he hated me when we were 
going up up until the last day he was dead and I'm, I try and figure that out and she asked me why I won't move back into that house and I say I haven't been home in 15 years because uh, mm-hmm. my mother died there gotcha gotcha yeah let me let me let me think you know it, it's interesting my mother has multiple sclerosis also oh, I'm sorry no, I feel you I feel you. oh she's 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 good but it's been it's 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 a bitch of a disease yeah um, so I feel that um I'm just trying to get a context of how, launching into it and how you, how you launch into it and what you're feeling at that time. Um, because I'm believing everything you're saying, which is, which is wonderful and feeling it. Um, I would just go deeper and I can tell you other ways to go there, but I think you already know, but just go deeper with the reality because you know where it's going to end up when you, cr- when you crunch up her vitamins or medication, the yogurt, put in the yogurt. The pills, yeah. Yeah, and you know you killed her. You gave it to her. So just sometimes just the thought of that, just the introduction of the thought of yogurt can do something to you. I'm not saying push, don't push anything. Mm-hmm. Don't, and don't show your hand yet either because you don't want to, you don't want to go there yet. But it's going to give you, it's going to go, it's going to take you somewhere just because you mentioned the yogurt. And sometimes, you know, you, you start to, you gird up and you brace differently because that's what fucking, that's what, that's what killed her. And just see what that does, what that does to you. Great, great. Okay. You want to go from the top, right? Sorry yeah. to, to leap in. Kapal, can you um, make this event a bit that has happened? It's not quite as pr- recent. Can you just make it a bit less recent and see how that helps you navigate yourself to the climax? Does that make sense? So What's you're, able, less recent? you're able to talk about it with a bit of distance from it initially, you know what I mm-hmm. mean? Mm-hmm. And see mm-hmm. if as you go along with it, the distance starts <laughs> getting closer. Do you know what I mean? Because right now it felt oh, yeah. very raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it right. felt very raw right at the beginning. Right. I think when you're telling a story about stuff, we don't know what it's going to tell us. And I can start talking about my mom that died, you know what I mean? But I'm sure if I kept talking, I'd find instances that would bring me closer to it than it does now do you know what i'm saying yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that takes you you know i haven't been back home in 15 years my um my mom died there she's been dead for um she's been dead for 15 years she was um i mean she was sick for a long time my father, he basically left because uh, he couldn't handle it. And Nina got out of there as soon as high school was over. So in the end, it was just me and my mom. You know, I remember the day I got into Williams. The worst day of my life. Because <laughs> uh, Fulbright scholarship, all of that, but I couldn't go. Couldn't go because uh, who would take care of her if I did? I hit the letter. I wasn't going to tell her. I was just going to pretend that I didn't get in. But um, Williams called my school, they called the high school. And uh, they told her, principal told her. And she was so happy. She was so excited. And then she nearly um, choked on her, on her own, uh, It's a horrible disease. Anyway, it was like a month later and uh, it was like a month before I graduated senior year. And she told me she decided to die. She was gonna, you know, and she never said it was for me. She, she, um, she never said it was for me. She, she, um, she knew about the scholarship though. And she knew, she knew she was gonna be alone. I, I mean, the problem was her hands. I, I mean, the, uh, the MS, it, it made them so gnarly. She, she couldn't open the pill bottles. I mean, she, she couldn't even swallow the pills. So I, I, I crushed them up for her. I mixed them.
I mixed it with some yogurt and we spent the day together and we read just some short stories and her favorite poems and some headlines. And she told me, um, <laughs> she told me I'd been a wonderful son. And then I, <laughs> I fed her the yogurt. Like she was my child. <laughs> you know, when I was in prison, I thought about you all the time. I don't know why. Why the fuck would I leave my wife for someone I just met in a diner? Why do I love you so much? And just now when you were talking about Gabriel, I realized, I realized you're the only person I've ever, I've ever met that's, lost somebody they love. That's really great stuff, Paul. It's really great stuff. The, the emotion is so, so real. You feel it. You tapped into it. Um, you, what I loved about that was, first of all, the distance I thought helped watching it. Did you feel that? When you get yeah. gave, you, know, you say it's 15, 18 years ago, right? It already, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, was, that, was, that was great. No, Chuck, director. <laughs> um, I'm director Hamlet. But when it starts to bubble up, your emotions start to bubble up. It was wonderful. Um, I would just, as you tend to, as you play with it more, when you turn, when you, when you, when you, when you're going out a different path, you start to say, "I spent the day with her." Because you bring up, I think you bring up the yogurt first, right? And her hand yeah. and the pills. And then you say you spent the day with her. That's right. When you go to spend the day with her, if you revert back to your childhood and think it, as you say, the best day in your life, like going to Disney World. Mm. You know, I'm not making, I'm making it bigger to make a point. But no, it'll, yeah, it'll, yeah. It'll, t it'll, it'll take that journey to the emotion. Because what we do as human beings, and especially as men, when we feel an emotion, we try to cover it. You know, so don't be afraid because we've seen it now. We've seen it and we're with you. But if you cover it, you're like, this person is in pain. Mm. So it's even that much more interesting and compelling. What's he going through? So the more you color, once you feel it, cover it with the day and the mat and the beauty of the day and everything you're doing. And then, and then that question, or when she says to you, you've been a wonderful son. Mm. That's a gut punch because Everybody who loves their mother and respects their opinion wants, wants that declaration that you are a wonderful son and you've been a wonderful son. Right. Um, and you did that and it's, 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 it's beautiful. And then that'll take you to the rest of the end of, to the end of that, that monologue until it turns back to her. Mm. You're the only person. Ironically, one of my oldest friends since three years old, we lived in Germany, we were next door neighbors together in Germany, just very briefly. But he told me, yeah, and I talked to him in 10 years. His father passed me last year. I just reached out, I want to talk to him. Ironically, his father passed. I was not able to go to the funeral. I said, so dude, how are you, how are you doing? He said, I'm okay, it's been a year now. There's some distance on it, a year. Cause I know he's really broken up. My brother went to the funeral and he says, really broken up. But he said, you know, I was fine and I'm usually fine. And around Christmas time, we went down to this, this, this Christmas thing with our son and he ran into a friend who had just lost her father. All she said to him, he told me this just yesterday. All she said to him was, how are you? And he said he just broke down in tears because they had a bond. They had a connection. So whatever that says to you, because it's what you're saying, and maybe it's part of what launches this conversation in, in the way in which you speak to her, because you understand that something that nobody else can understand right now. Mm, absolutely. And, that, and, that, and that, that'll just really... Uh, I think carry you into why why would I do this? Why would I leave my family for for you? And he loves her, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the answer. That's, that's, that's all he has. It's a, yeah. She's all he has. Yeah. But 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 great stuff. I would say just keep playing playing with those dynamics, those juxtapositions. Uh, but especially, I love. It's always exquisite to watch when somebody feels an emotion and they cover it and they push it down. Mm. 
we know you're in pain and we know it's there. <laughs> yes. Love it. Great. Nice Thanks, one. Blair. That's so helpful. Thank you, Dan. Really good work. Thank you, mate. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bibi. Hi. Hey. Uh, how are you doing? Is that Bibi the singer? Come again? Is that Bibi the singer? Yeah. <laughs> you got a great voice. Uh, Thank you, thank you so much. I uh, I did musical theater at Howard, and I'm finishing up my MFA at the Old Globe. We talk about your Othello all the time. We, uh, what? Just, yeah, we see your picture out there in the in the court, right? Well, the Old Globe. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Listen, I my major is music theater, so I did not mean in any way to insult. Say the singer. You are a singer, an actor, and I'm sure a dancer. You are an all around entertainer, not just a singer, obviously. Thank you, Mr. Underwood. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, I want to share some August Wilson with you all today. Nice. Um, I'm working on. Tanya from King Headley, second. Um, and I'm sure you know the story, but you know, so her husband, King Headley, she's gone out of jail, has been in jail for about seven years. Uh, Tanya is 35, has a 17 year old daughter who is now pregnant, and Tanya has just realized that she's pregnant and she wants to get an abortion. And King really wants to have the baby, but I I mean, it's Pittsburgh, it's 1985, it, the economy is trash, the violence everywhere, there are kids like robbing, you know, old ladies on the street, and um, I, I don't want to have this baby, and he says he needs to have this baby, so that's all I'm going to do. Oh, and what I'm working on is, you mentioned earlier, talking about like the, like the journey of the scene, the roller coaster of the scene, and this is definitely, a uh, monologue has a lot of that, and they say that Wilson writes in like, like these blues cadences, these like verses and these refrains. So I kind of, I want to like find the, I want to honor the journey of it basically. Yeah, yeah, great. Oops. I'm having this baby. I am 35 years old. Don't seem like there's nothing left. I'm through with babies. I ain't raising no more. Ain't raising no grandkids. I'm looking out for Tanya. I want to raise no kid to have somebody shoot him, to have his friends shoot him, to have the police shoot him. Why well, I want to bring another life into this world that don't respect life. I ain't raising no more babies when you got to fight to keep them alive. Take little buddy Will's mother, Ember in my road. What she got? Hmm. A heartache that don't never go away. She's up there now, sitting down in her living room. She got to sit down because she can't stand up. She's sitting down trying to figure it out, trying to figure out what happened. One minute, her house is full of life. The next minute, it's full of death. She was waiting for him to come home and they bring her a corpse. Say, come down and make the identification. Is this your son? They used to take pictures. They don't even take pictures no more. Just pull him out of the freeze and she look at him. She don't want to look at him. They make her look at him. What to do now? Nothing to do but call the undertaker. The line's busy. She got to call back five times. The undertaker got so much business, he don't know what to do. He losing sleep. He got to hire two more helpers to go with the two he already got. You don't even look at the bodies no more. Couldn't tell you what they looked like. He only remember the problems he had with them. This one's so big and fat, if he fall off the table, take six men to pick him up. That one ain't got no cheek. The other one's eyes won't stay closed. That one's been dead so long, he got maggots coming out of his nose. The family can't pay for that one. The coroner want to see the other one again. That one, mama won't go home. The I ain't going through that. I ain't having this baby, and I got to explain it to nobody. Mm, great stuff. <laughs> um, what happens right before this? Um, Tanya comes home from work from the doctor, talking about the, uh, and someone told King that I'm planning to get an abortion. And he doesn't even say anything. We just make eye contact and I go, I ain't having this baby. Um, at this point, has she made the decision to have the abortion or has she had the abortion? That's where she's coming back from. Back she's from made that. the decision to have the abortion. So there's still something to fight for. Would you say she really wants that baby though? Or not? She, what she says she means. 
I think she wishes she could, I think she wishes things were different and that she could have a baby, but she says earlier in the speech, she says, I don't want to have a baby that's younger than my grandchild. What's who turned the world around like that? What's mm. that like? Mm. Yeah. She makes those declarations though. I wonder if she would really love a child or maybe not. I, I, don't, I don't know. It's a choice. I think she does. I think, you know, I think uh, it's a really visceral experience to have somebody growing inside of you. And I think the decision to end life like that is, is a burden. I don't know if that's an easy thing to do. I don't know if anybody wants to do that. Um, right. So yeah, it's definitely Yeah. Yeah, Vivi, I was just going to suggest something. Just off exactly the question Blair asked and your response to it. Sorry, who is it you're talking to right now? My husband, King Headley. Okay. And you, you're making a decision to end a life, as you put it. Given where you're going to go, try having more of a, a, a conversation. Like, try, try, I know you're, you're, you're going to fight for your right not to have this baby because this is the shit you're going to be bringing this child to. We know that, that we're going to get there. But initially, it's, it's, you've come from the doctors and you've discussed ending that life that's inside you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you're actually genuinely, you know, the problem sometimes with whatever is that we, we, because we know the, because we know that the person has to have listened to you because that's the structure of the play. We sometimes forget how do we make people listen? You know, how, how, why doesn't he just lash back at you saying, what the fuck have you, why does he let you keep, maybe there's some way about the way you start talking. Maybe he sees a vulnerability in you. Maybe he sees a little bit of fear in you. Maybe he's not sure where it's going, but I do feel that if you started there, this would have turned into an argument and not a speech. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah, yeah, I do. He would have hit, if you're coming that hard at him about the fact you're about to end his child's life, He's going to yeah. come back and say, well, fuck it. But if you're explaining to him, he might just take a beat and listen. Just think of the world. Blair said it earlier. The world, the whole beginning, middle, and consider this the entire play. You know what I mean? When you're doing a monologue. And ask yeah. yourself, how do you stop this? How, why will this guy listen if it's that delivery right at the end? You know what I mean? That we have at yeah. the end. Blair, do you know what I'm saying with that? I know exactly what you're saying. And to that end, what Chuck was saying, you know, a big part of that monologue is you're, you, all of it makes sense. It's very logical. And people understand it. If you're black in America, you really understand it. But if you're a black man in America, you're talking about raising a black male child and what could befall him in this world in which we live. You're speaking to a black man. Yeah. So think about this. All of the part of the monologue where you're talking about what would happen at the mortuary? This guy's head's too big. This guy's missing a cheek. Maybe that's your perspective because that's emotional. It's, 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 it's real. It's a mother's perspective. I don't want that for my child. But maybe somewhere, I don't know exactly where it is, but just play with it. It goes from there to, you know, you know this. Yep. This is you. You're a black man. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So that'll put you somewhere else. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's really helpful. Yeah, let me jump back in. I ain't having this baby. I'm 35 years old. Don't seem like there's nothing left. I'm through with babies. I ain't raising no more. I ain't raising no grandkids. I'm sorry. Can I stop you? Really? That's yeah, I want to stop. I'm to do that. I'm sorry. You wanted to stop. I was feeling yeah. that. I was feeling that. <laughs> Just this ain't this ain't the play. I know. But for this exercise, pretend as if he says to you, I want that baby. You're gonna have that baby. So your first line, I ain't having that baby, is response to that attitude, even if it's not spoken. Sure. Because he wants it, just that this man wants this. So you need to explain why it's not gonna happen. Okay, just as an exercise. Okay. All right. I ain't having this baby. I am 35 years old. Don't seem like there's nothing left. I'm through with babies. I ain't raising no more. I ain't raising no grandkids. I'm looking out for Tanya. I don't want to raise no kid, have somebody shoot him. Have the 
his friends shoot him, to have the police shoot him? Well, I'm gonna bring another life into this world that don't respect life. I ain't raising no more babies when you gotta fight to keep them alive. Take little buddy Will's mother, then run my road, what she got? Hmm? A heartache that don't never go away. She's up there now, sitting down in her living room. She got to sit down because she can't stand up. She's sitting down trying to figure it out, trying to figure out what happened. One minute, her house is full of life. The next minute, it's full of death. She was waiting for him to come home, and they bring her a corpse. Say, come down and make the identification. Is this your son? They used to take pictures. They don't even take pictures no more. Just pull them out of the freezer and she look at him. She don't want to look at him. They make her look at him. What to do now? Nothing to do but call the undertaker. The line's busy. She got to call back five times. The undertaker got so much business, he don't know what to do. He losing sleep. He got to hire two more helpers to go with the two he already got. He don't even look at the bodies no more. Couldn't tell you what they look like. He only remembered the problems he had with them. This one so big and fat, if he fall off the table, takes six men to pick him up. That one ain't got no cheek. That one eyes won't stay closed. That one's been dead so long, he got maggots coming out of his nose. The family can't pay for that one. The coroner want to see the other one again. That one mama won't go home. I ain't going through that. I ain't having this baby. I got to explain it to nobody. Nice. Yeah, yeah. You a lot of different stuff going on there. Different, so different. And you know, I heard it differently. Now, in the context of the play, of course, there may be more drive under it, more fire under it more resist, resistance to resentment. Like, why are you putting this on me? Why do I have to explain this? You know, look, I don't want to have this child. And you know, and, and, and it's, it's implied. You understand this. We lived this. You have lived this. Black Americans, we know this world. Because everything you're saying, he knows. Yeah. So the fact that you're speaking in this moment at this time is because he's probably, I don't know the lines in that particular scene, but I'm sure there's an expectation. Uh, I would just play with those things. Um, but just yeah. know probably, which would be the logical next layer, is the drive underneath it to make the points to him. Right, how do you get them? Yeah, that was really helpful, because I mean, these people are married, right? They yeah. love each other, so it's like, how do you how do you fight with somebody you love about yeah. something that you, you care about? Right. And um, I think it's easier to listen to somebody who's not it's railing. Totally. Yeah. It's funny, we get so caught up sometimes, and be, we all do this, maybe, but because because we know where the scene's supposed to go. We know what the scene's doing. We forget what we're actually doing as real people in the moment, right. which is trying to explain why you're not gonna have the baby. And right. also what you're bringing into the scene, like Blair asked, like what just happened beforehand, what you're coming into, that, that cannot be a easy visit to the doctors, whatever your decision is later on. But because we know that's where she has to get, because we define it, like defiance and all those, exercises we do in acting where it says what's your action here what's your action right we do that so much we forget that actually what would i do in this moment if i had to explain this to my husband exactly and then you have a, a narrative that was beautiful but lovely adjustment thank you so much thank you so much thank you Great. um damien where's damien i'm back on i'm here i'm here you're back I'm on here. hey back, on. back in the room how are you guys doing? See me? Good, great. Welcome. Yeah, good. Good to see you. Awesome. Uh, hey, uh, I'm in uh, New York City. Um, originally born in Jamaica, partly raised in Miami. Um, and like I said, I'm in the city now. Working on uh, Mark Anthony from Julius Caesar. Um, the basic plot of it is, you know, I mean, it's kind of based on history. So it's the idea that um, some conspirators kind of like convinces Brutus, who's Caesar's friend, to go along and assassinate him because he's rising so much in power that everyone is scared and they, you know, people start getting jealous and kind of try to overtake. 
And so they end up doing it and he ends up being killed. And now we're at his funeral. Um, and, you know, there's been whispers and, you know, things of like, oh, he was, he was such a bad leader, blah, 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 blah. And I'm his best friend or, you know, I, I claim myself as his best, his best friend. And I'm here to speak on his behalf because so far no one has said anything that's been really positive. And so I'm that, you know, I'm, I'm come speaking for my, you know, speaking, speaking about my brother. Et tu Brutus. Yeah. Yes. Et tu Brutus. <laughs> uh, and um, it's, and it's, a, it's, it's a role that I've always wanted to play. I've not played it. Um, I've gone in for Brutus, you know, like, like you say, you have that, smile and everyone can take it and I play evil very well <laughs> so uh yeah I'm taking a stab at it and one of the things I'm trying to work on is as with any Shakespearean piece it's about I I, I value authenticity and I value like truthful connection um and for me I think that's one of the biggest things that I respond to when I see Shakespeare being being done so it's just one of those things. And this speech is kind of like, it's such a balance of emotion and like, you know, clarification and, emo and just that all kind of stuff. So, yeah. Fantastic. Let's do it. <clears throat> Friends, the Romans, the countrymen, lend me your ear. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The good that men do is often Sorry, try it again. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Friends, the Romans, a countryman, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often tarried with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus has told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it were a grievous fault, and grievously has Caesar answered it. Here on the leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man, so are they all, all honorable men, come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend faithful and just to me. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious and Brutus is an honorable man. He had brought many captives to Rome whose ransoms did the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor hath cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the Lupercal, I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you now to mourn for him? Oh, judgment, thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reasons. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. Man, keep going, I want some more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was wonderful. You have such a, 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 a facile tongue and just um, very clear in what you're saying and what you're, what you're doing um, and what you're projecting and, and expressing. Um, wow, I, I didn't even know to mess with, where Chuck, where are you? I don't think I'd mess with that too much. Uh, um, no, I know everything you said was great. The first thing I was like, it's the very, very clear arguments. And, and the only thing I would throw at you, Damien, is, <laughs> is 
Blair did this for several years in LA law, playing a lawyer and prosecutor, is <laughs> embracing rhetoric, you know. Yes, um, yes. A lot of a lot of times in Shakespeare, a lot of speeches, people make it rhetorical when they're not. People often make his questions rhetorical when they're not. They're never rhetorical. But this is a speech that has a lot of rhetoric in it. You know, there's a lot of groups of threes. There's a lot, a lot of studied uh, Cicero techniques and stuff in this. So I, I loved your honesty about it. There's a line later on where you go something like, pardon me, I, I'm, my heart is in there. That's why I lost my shit. But what if you don't lose your, your, your shit and, and lose the rhetoric until nearing that line? Do you know what I mean? What if you, you really embrace the rhetoric of this speech from the beginning? Because he does all these things. He goes, they say this, the, but this. They say this, but the. there's a real structure to it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I, would, yeah. I would like you to sit, surprise us when your emotions happen. Because right now, the way you're doing it, we're seeing your emotions right from the start. So we don't need you to say pardon me later. It's like, oh shit, this stuff's caught up with me. Whoa. You know what I mean? Got so you, that got you, start, got you. start gradually and start, give yourself, you, you've got, you, you use the verse line beautifully and it, it's wonderful, but really um, Obama the shit out of the speech initially. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Blair? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Hey, two, two things real right. quick, Damien, and they're both technical things because you have the mm -hmm. emotional life going on and you're, and you're, and you're good, great with the, the language. Um, one of your first lines, you say good and evil. What is that line about? Um, the, uh, the evil that men do lives after them. The good is often tarried with their bones. Okay, so in life, comparing and contrasting juxtaposition is always good. Yes. Especially yes. in Shakespeare. Always lean into the juxtaposition. Yes. So in good and life, that's one thing. In death, so color it differently. That's a technical thing. Gotcha. But it's yeah. important because especially when you're just being, you know, there's a lot of rhetoric and it's just, it's the beauty of the language. That'll help you clarify what you're saying and it makes it richer. Yeah. One. Okay. And, and part of the rhetoric is that Brutus and those guys are close by. You know, they're, they're, yes, they're, yes, they're, yes, yes. It's yes. a dangerous thing you're doing. So yes. by the, yes. you can only really become the full-blooded whatever when you know you've got the crowd on your side, when you know they will step in the way of anyone hurting you. So really navigate yourself with that. And picture the reaction you're having with the crowd. Do you know what I mean? Just picture gotcha. how your words are landing. Watch how your words are landing. See how that, the, what that does for you, yeah? Okay. <clears throat> Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus has told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it were a grievous fault. And grievously has Caesar answered it. Here on the leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man, so are they all, all honorable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. He hath brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor hath cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the Lupercal I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious and sure. Brutus is an honest 
honest man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you now to mourn for him? Judgment, thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reasons. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar. And I must pause till it come back to me. It's great stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. wonderful adjustments. Real quick, that juxtaposition you did was beautiful. That contrast. You did it also later on, which you did the first time. Bury him. I'm not here to bury him. I'm here to, well, actually, no, you could do that more. Actually, call that more. Uh, whatever the line is about burying him and praising him. Oh, um, uh, well, but I come to bury Caesar. Beginning, yeah. right? I come to bury Caesar, not, not to praise him. The juxtaposition of that. Yeah, gotcha. Bury Caesar, not to praise him. It's a, it'll, I don't want to give you line. No, yeah, 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 yeah. It'll color it differently. Yeah. Um, and all this is just this, this is fine tuning and making more, more colorful. Um, mm -hmm. The one other thing I would say is, this is again a technical thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say this first time, but I saw you did it twice. Presence. People talk about presence on stage, mm -hmm. on camera. What we do in life, it's all about the transference of energy, of energy flow. When you're holding the stage as a leading actor, any mm -hmm. actor, actress, anybody, when you're holding the stage, when you relinquish the stage, it takes your energy away. Mm. So when you said, when you started getting emotional and you back up, what's that line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bear with me. I should stay with them. I got you. You're yeah. saying that because it's becoming emotional? Bear with me? Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying, instead of backing up, since I saw you did it twice, stay in it. Let us feel you. Let us, especially on camera, let us see you. Yeah, yeah. And then we want to bear, then we want to bear with you more. Yeah. Okay, that's a technical thing. Just don't give up your energy. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. That's all I got. Yeah. Cool. It's great. Thank you guys, I, man. Thank I, you. Felt, I felt embracing the argument, you know, finding made sense. Maybe when you work on it, you start realizing how many times you keep saying honorable and honorable. And maybe yeah. there's a point where you're no longer scared of saying it. Maybe the, it goes from being honorable to being honorable to being on really. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a reason why you have so many. So you have your yeah, yeah, yeah. honorable man has to shift also. And that's what I mean yeah. by looking at what the crowd is giving you. As you get them on your side, as you're warming up, you, you don't yeah. even have to pretend anymore. Because the very last one, I think you say, up until then, you keep going, Brutus is an honorable Brutus. Brutus is an honorable Brutus. And then I think the last one, you go, and he sure. is honorable. Sure. He yeah, is and honorable. sure, he is an honorable man. Yeah. You don't say Brutus, yeah. you just call him a he. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, I think there's a, there's a journey with the honorable, which... As you, you, you do it yeah. more, you figure out how your relationship with that changes. But that was strong work. And, and yeah. you know, Shakespeare is good for you, mate. It's a good, it's a good thing. Do it very well. You know, I think Thank Blair will attest to that, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Damien. All right. Yemi. Man, you got some powerhouse actors in here, man. You know, I, we don't mess around. You're not you playing. Know? Every single one of them. I ain't going to waste your time, Blair. Shit. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yemi. Do we have Yemi? Where is Yemi? Hello? Hey. Oh, hey. How Hi, are how's you? it going? Good, yeah, good. good to see you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to do something that I wrote. Um, and it's kind of just about being human and not really believing what that means and then kind of trying to figure out how that comes about and um, the situation is just chatting with a friend on a roof and you know questions are asked and this is the response nice nice okay can you tell me i always want to know where you're coming from like what happens right before this you're chatting on the roof but what happens before this in your story um it in the story it basically it's like that he's asking why can't you be loved like why are you not able to like use your words and speak and express yourself? Ah. And this is her response. That's good to know. Okay, great. Okay. Wait. 
Fear is a language I've been speaking for the majority of my life. Fear of failing, fear of living, fear of doing something wrong, fear of doing something too right, fear of myself. That has been my language. Now I don't know. I don't know. I do know it doesn't serve me though. But we are creatures of habit. And when your habits haven't been steeped in the things that make you grow, the ground becomes your home. That gritty, dirty soil that we all try to escape where the worms are your friend and time spent with the sun is nothing more than just a fleeting moment. Oh, that is how I've lived my life. Why is always the question at hand. Why would I choose to live in darkness when light exists? What I feel that people fail to realize is that the dark is comforting. Darkness is our oldest friend. We have all known darkness before birth. It's home. And it's not all so bad. It feels good. Sometimes it's the, that comfort that you go out and seek from other people. You know, that same comfort that you deny yourself. Sometimes it makes me feel loved and safe. It holds me without any judgment. Sometimes all you have to cling to is that little piece of hope that it provides and then you wait. Nice, where did that, is this an entire play or a monologue you wrote? This is just a monologue I wrote. What? <laughs> I don't know why I said it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's beautifully written and beautifully done. But I'm just curious where it came from internally. Okay, so internally I was like in this workshop with Dominique Missouri and she said, um, write to heal yourself. And I was just like, oh, all right. So I did. And I was like clicking and clicking away off the keyboard and there's more of it. It's just not like done. So that's gotcha. what I have. Gotcha. No, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. Try it again and just talk, talk to me. Do you have all the faces on screen? I just have you. Okay, good. So just talk to me. Okay. Just talk to me. Don't think about performing it. Because it's an interesting thing, because you've written the words. I know. It was very personal and intimate, because you put every word down, every sentence, and every comma. So now throw that out the window and just tell me a story. I don't know where it's set, but let's pretend it's at night. It is at night. Okay. Three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It's quiet. We're on the rooftop, you said, right? Mm -hmm. Of a house or a business? Of a house. Of a house. So people are, let's pretend people are sleeping downstairs. So just talk to me. Tell me the story. Okay. Fear is a language I've been speaking for the majority of my life. Fear of failure, fear of living, fear of doing something wrong, fear of doing something too right, fear of myself. That has been my language. Now I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I, I know it doesn't serve me though. But we're creatures of habit and when your habits haven't been steeped in the things that make you grow, the ground becomes your home. That gritty, dirty soil that we all try to escape where the worms become your friend and time spent with the sun is Nothing more than a fleeting moment. That is how I've lived my life. Yeah? Why is always the question at hand? Why would I choose to live in darkness when light exists? What I feel that people don't realize is that Darkness is comforting. Darkness is our oldest friend. Darkness we have known since before birth. It is home. And it's not so bad and it feels good. It feels good. Sometimes it's that comfort that we deny ourselves, you know. Sometimes it makes me feel loved. It makes me feel safe. And it holds me without any judgment. Sometimes it provides that thing that you cling to and it's just that little bit of hope that you cling to and then you wait. Yeah.
That was beautiful. Thank you. Really wonderful. Sometimes I think as actors, we fall in the trap as young actors, thinking that because we can shed a tear that makes us great or makes it good. Just because you cry doesn't make it good. But that was beautiful and you cried. So I'm not saying this because you cried. Right, yeah. Because it, it, it was all part of the fabric of what you just did. And it was intimate. Um, it was wonderful. I, I, just, I was just trying to get you away from the, the, it's the first time jitters, but also the techno aspect of knowing your own words so well. Sometimes it's like doing a play for months and months and months. You just got to let it go. Let the work go mm -hmm. and just talk which is what you did beautifully. Thank you. Yeah, what, what you were saying is powerful, just about the darkness from birth and it being comfort. Um, and I heard it, I heard it more the second time, uh, much stronger than even the first, but just uh, beautiful, wonderful work. Lovely. Um, yeah, I mean, can I just ask you, is, is, this, is this part of a, are you looking to be, is this part of a play or is it part of a piece to be performed in isolation? What is it really? That's like a really good question, and I'm not really sure. I really okay. kind of feel like it's just a circle of people, and then they get beamed into the situation where they're their most human self. Right. And then we listen to it. And I, it's probably like me. It's like, you know what I mean? I find it very difficult to talk to people. <laughs> Interesting. And, yeah, that's kind of what I saw. I, I, I know we're, we're, we're going to have one more person, but I, I, I really – can you give – and you did it in this last version. And I, I, I don't know, Blair, would you be interested in seeing this as if it just happened as a scene in a play and you know, it isn't just a piece, as it were? Let's create a situation of cool. someone, you know, maybe a guy that you really fancy that just doesn't understand. He can see the beauty in you. He thinks you're amazing. You don't see it. And he just asks, why the hell? Why the hell? You, you know what? Go, as soon as I give you, I'm going to riff something, Yemi, and just go with it. Just answer what I riff with you. Just, I'm going to give you the riff to start and just go in as if it was part of a play, okay? Yeah? You know? Okay. Do you want to try that? Yes, I'd love to. Absolutely. You know, girl, I mean, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Why are you so fearful? Scared as shit of everything. Look at you. Look at that smile, man. Why are you so scared? Fear is a language I've been speaking for the majority of my life. Fear of failure, fear of living, fear of doing something wrong, fear of doing something too right, fear of myself. Fear. That is my language. Now I don't know. I don't know. I know that doesn't serve me. We are creatures of habit, and when your habits haven't been steeped in the things that make you grow, the ground becomes your home. That gritty, dirty soil that we all try to escape. <laughs> When where the worms become your friends and time spent with the sun is nothing more than just a fleeting moment. Hmm. That is how I've lived my life. Why is always the question at hand? Why would I want to live in darkness when light exists? What I feel that people fail to realize is that the darkness is comforting. Darkness is her oldest friend the dark we have all known before birth and it's home it's not always so bad and it feels good sometimes it's that comfort that you go out and seek from other people you know that same comfort that you deny yourself sometimes it makes me feel loved and safe and it holds me without any judgment sometimes sometimes it's that thing you cling to a little piece of hope that you cling to and then you wait. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. No, it's Thanks good. That. That's yeah. beautiful writing. Blair. It's beautiful writing and launching pads are always so helpful. It's why I keep going back to where you're coming from. I mean, we all know it's acting 101. Where you're coming from, where you're going. But it's there for, it's, it's that way for a reason. Because it, it, mm -hmm, it, for sure. everything we do in this moment um, yeah, to be honest, I was like going back, like back and forth. I'm like, does does he say why are you such a bitch? 
<laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> you know what, Yam Healer, like whoever this is, she doesn't have a name. Like, why won't you talk to me? Yeah. And yeah. it's like, yeah, and that's what it was. So thank you so much. Beautiful work. You know, now, like, we're gonna, like, thank you so much, Yami, yeah, really lovely. Um, now we're gonna have, I'm hoping she's on, Epiphany, who's jumping in for the missing person. We've just let her know, it's very last minute, but I've always said to actors, luck is what happens, you know, when you're ready to accept it, right, Blair? Do you know what I mean? It ain't waiting for you. So, Epiphany, I hope you're there because I just gave you a big build-up. Yeah. So it'd be very embarrassing if you're not. So, she, we just reached out to her. We said, you're watching. Do you have something? And the girl was ready, ready to work. And that's what we all have to be. Go on. Yes. Thank you so much for the opportunity. God came through. Thank you, Blair. Um, so this is from Fireflies by Donye R. Love. Uh, in this play, um, my character is playing a preacher's wife and during the civil rights movement time. And he, uh, he gets killed. And throughout the play, we learn that she has actually been like the backbone behind the ministry and has mainly been writing all his speeches. And in this part of the show is after he died, it is at his funeral and she is she's trying to find the words to tell the congregation to keep like they got this to keep moving um yeah so i wanted to revisit this one because it's it's been a while and i want to get that fire back nice nice go for it i think about my great granddaddy and those questions that he asked God often, particularly when I see fireflies. God came to me in a dream once and he said that we are all fireflies. Every single one of us, particularly us coloreds. And this world tries mighty hard to catch and steal our light. But we have to remember that no one can ever steal our light because we have a special assignment given from the one who sits high and looks low. Our assignment is to fly. We have to fly as high as we possibly can. We have to soar because the higher we are, the better we will be at making this world a brighter place. Let those little wings hum. Fly on, fireflies. Fly on. Because when we fly on together, past those fiery skies into the place of peace and hope, when we get there, the power inside of us will pour out and shake this world into a glorious new. All right, can you hear me? Yes, indeed. Oh, good, okay. okay. I think that, that was nice. <laughs> Thank you. Look at you, preacher's wife. <laughs> <laughs> and look at you for being ready on a moment's notice. That's, yeah. the, way, that's the way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so what I would say is, I wanna try two things. Do you mind doing it two more times? Oh, I'm ready. Okay, good. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the last actress. Will you come closer to the camera and just say the whole thing to me? Just talk to me. And then I'll tell you, oh, where you go? Not on my screen. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Okay. Then the next time you have that other layer of performance because you're speaking to a congregation, right? Indeed. Okay. So I'm not even gonna say too much. I just want you to talk to me and communicate your message to me and connect it to me. And then do it again and step back to where you were and speak to the congregation. Because that is a different expression, a different manifestation when you're speaking to a crowd. But I want you to connect it first to me. All right. Okay? And one other thing, when you talk about the things that are beautiful, mm -hmm. the fireflies and the fire and all of that, 
see the beauty. Because I know you're in pain. You're talking about at a funeral, right? Your husband has just died. Yes. Right? So I know there's pain. And you're tapping into that. But when you see the beauty, show us that beauty. Because the words will take you somewhere else. After you paint the picture of the beauty, there's stuff that comes after that, where that pain will be present. Okay? Okay. All right. And, oh, by the way, I'm sorry. You can go right into the second one, if that's okay. Just feel the communication, then step back and just do it again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think about my great granddaddy and those questions that he asks God often, particularly when I see fireflies. God came to me in a dream once and he told me that we are all fireflies, every single one of us, particularly us coloreds. And this world tries mighty hard to catch and steal our light. But we have to remember no one can ever steal our light because we have a special assignment given from the one who sits high and looks low, our assignment is to fly. We have to fly as high as we possibly can. We have to soar because the higher we are, the better we'll be at making this world a brighter place. Let those little wings hum. Fly on, Firefly. Fly on. Because the higher we are, the better we'll be making this world a brighter place. When we fly on together, past those fiery skies, into that place of peace and hope, when we get there, the power inside of us will pour out and shake this world into a glorious new. I think about my great granddaddy and those questions that he asked God often, particularly when I see fireflies. God came to me in a dream once and he told me, we are all fireflies. <sighs> Particularly us colors. And the world will try mighty hard to catch and steal our light. But we have to remember no one can ever steal our light because we have a special assignment given from the one who sits high and looks low our assignment is to fly we have to fly as high as we possibly can we have to soar because the higher we are the better we'll be at making this world a brighter place let those little wings hum fly on firefly fly on because when we fly on together through the fiery sky into that place of peace and hope, when we get there, all the power inside of us will pour out and shake this world into a glorious new. Nice, nice. That was great. That was wonderful because, see, I tell you what, that was really beautiful. The first time I saw it, I saw the pain of a woman at a funeral. When you possess anything, when you possess it, when you own it, whether mm -hmm. it's intelligence or it's status or it's letters, DR, MD, whatever, respect, you don't have to act as actors. It's a trap. You, have, you try to act smart, act mean, play for results. You don't have to act as if you're in pain at a funeral because we know that in your, your foundational work is going to, it's going to be there. It's going to be present in what's in you, what's in your spirit. It's going to come out in your words. So you already possess it. An audience, a congregation in a church 
whenever you've been at a funeral and you see a loved one, a family member speaking, you know it is monumental for them to just stand up and speak words, not break down crying. So what's important to do is play against it. When you speak of the beauty, it's, it's already, it's the undercurrent. The death mm -hmm. and the loss of your loved one is, is the undercurrent. The beauty of watching a person speak or an actor represent that, an actor telling a story is to fight against the tears. And when you are speaking of something beautiful, like the fireflies, which is what you did, and, the, and what we have to do, we must, we must soar. All of that, it's, it takes us to a different place and it makes us engage to the more we wanna listen because we're with you. We're already with you because you lost your husband. But if it's just pain, now this is an acting thing, if it's just pain, then it becomes one note, which you don't want. But what you did after the adjustment was really very wonderful and beautiful. And I was with you the whole time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, no, it was really lovely work. I, I, we're, we're, Blair, do you think you can give us five more minutes of your time? I know yeah. we're all... Epiphany, I just want you to try be, taking those notes Blair said, right? I want to hear it one more time. And I'm just going to do, tell you two things. Ask you one thing. You have a theater company you founded, right? You're frozen. Are you there? Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So you founded a, you, there's a theater company you, you founded, right? Yes. That's, your, fly, that's your firefly, yes. right? Hold that in your head as the, something to associate. And secondly, hmm. when you say fly on firefly, I think your husband is a firefly too, right? So just try that and give the speech. Just go for it. Those are the two things I'm going to say to you and start the speech. Bruh, thanks. <laughs> I think about my great granddaddy and the questions that he asked God often, particularly when I see fireflies. God came to me in a dream once and he said, we are all fireflies. Every single one of us, particularly us coloreds. And this world tries mighty hard to catch and steal our light. But we have to remember no one can ever steal our light because we have a special assignment given from the one who sits high and looks low. Our assignment is to fly. We have to fly as high as we possibly can. We have to soar because the higher we are, the better we'll be at making this world a brighter place. Fly on fireflies. Fly on. Because when we fly on together through the fiery skies into the place of peace and hope, all the power inside of us will pour out and shake this world into a glorious new. Yeah, that's it. I want to be a firefly now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Epiphany. Thanks, Lovely. Uh, and thank you for stepping into the breach like that and bringing such strong work. Um, guys, we're at the end of this session with Blair. Michelle, can we unmute oh, everyone? Sorry. Just express our thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. You guys were amazing. You guys were amazing. I mean, really, everybody's such powerful actors. I feel I feel inspired and motivated today. Seriously, thank thank you all. Um, Thank just you, time, allowing me to share time with you and, and enjoy the space. Thank you for giving up your time, mate. I know even at this time you're still a busy guy. I, I, I knew from the first moment we met and spoke, you know, that you were the sort of person I feel that more, as many people as possible, should hear your voice. 
Uh, so thank you for sharing that uh, generosity and that knowledge. And you're an inspiration of a whole generation. You broke through when things weren't that easy. So thank you for that. And thank you for being our guest on this. And let's, let's do that Hamlet together, okay?